Hi everyone, I'm Nafisa Mehtaj and today I'll be talking about the heat transfer lab. So in this lab we will do three experiments. In the first experiment we will conduct the steady state heat conduction experiment and in the third one we will measure the thermal properties of a non-metal using MTPS method and in the last one we will conduct experiment on the forced and free convection method. So let's get started. So this is the setup for the linear steady state heat conduction experiment. Uh, we have our series of metal bars and there are thermocouples here and this is our power supply system and here we have DAQAMI software where we will collect our data. So in this experiment we will calculate the conductivity of the metal bars and here we will use the Fourier's law of heat conduction equation for finding out the conductivity. So to calculate the conductivity we will have to measure the cross section of the metal bars and the thickness of the metal bars and we will get the temperature difference from our software and also the heat rate we can calculate from there. So first we will uh, we will calculate the cross sectional area. So to calculate the cross sectional area of the metal bar we will unlock this So here we can see that we have our metal bar here. So we can just measure the radius of it using slide calipers or scale and then we will calculate the area of the metal bar. Then we will unlock this again. So after that we will calculate the thickness of the metal bar and to ca calculate the thickness of the metal bar we can just uh, calculate the distance from one thermocouple to another thermocouple and the distance should be orthogonal it should be orthogonal but not diagonal so here we can see that uh, for water supply we have a water pipe connected here and for water supply, we will turn on this. So here we just click this button to on this system and we are using the manual setup and here we can just, uh, here is the eye. So it is showing the current and if we change it, then it is the voltage. So from here we can just uh, multiply the current and voltage to get the power supply rate. So here we will uh, go to the DAQAMI software. So we will select the new configuration and select the automatic. So this will be our screen. So we know that in our experiment we have total 8 thermocouples so we should be having 8 channels here which is not here so we have to add them manually. So we go to the switch to the display panel and select channels and then we select the other channels. And then we go back, back to the displays. From here we have to drag the newly added channels like this and then we click on the run button. So we will get our graph. So in our graph the x is the time and y is the temperature. So finally we will get a graph like this. So we can see that for all the thermocouples the temperature is not 
increasing anymore with time so we can conclude that all the metal bars are now in the steady state condition so we will just collect the temperature in the initial condition and the final step for calculating the temperature difference here so far we have just seen the graph so now we, see, we will see how we will export the data to export the data we click on this button and it will give an option that export data we select this one and we can select browse to choose the folder where we want to keep the stored data and then we can select here the separator so here I have selected the tab so we can also see how our data will look like so we can just see click on the preview so this will be our data and then we select on the export so in our second experiment we will measure the thermal conductivity and thermal effusivity of materials using the mtps method so what is mtps method mtps method is the modified transient plane source method uh, it is a non-destructive method used to measure the thermal properties of a material and uh, here in this method uh, it involves placing a sensor on the material surface and then a heat pulse is applied through the sensor and the sensor measures the temperature response of the material over time the whole system analyzes this temperature response to calculate the thermal conductivity and effusivity so basically the thermal conductivity here indicates how well a material can conduct heat and uh, the thermal effusivity represents a material's ability to exchange heat with its surroundings combining both thermal conductivity and thermal capacity so here we will measure the thermal conductivity and effusivity of pyrex using c -therm device so we need to place our material here so before uh, placing the material here we need to use any type of contact substance so here we are using water then we place the material here after that we will place an insulator and then we keep it like this so here we will click on the TCI software and uh, we will click on OK then we will click on the new test and then next so here we will select any test method appropriate to our materials I am not changing anything right now so it selected the ceramics so then I am clicking next and it will take a bit time and it will automatically fill up all of the things here okay so here we can see that the contact agent is selected as none but we used the water so we have to change it here then we will click on the start test and uh, it will take a bit time to start the test So here uh, our main goal is to collect the data of effusivity and the thermal conductivity. Uh, this device is not calibrated. We can see that uh, the, uh, their value will be not accurate right now, but we are learning how to export the data and collect the data from here. So it, so we will keep it running for couple of minutes and export the data
so our last experiment is about the forced and free convection system and here we will use a copper block we will heat two copper blocks to a certain temperature and let it cool in the natural convection procedure and force convection method so in this experiment we will be using this equation to calculate the heat transfer coefficient and for that we will collect the temperature and time from our experimental setup so here t means the temperature at time t uh, suppose we are heating our uh, copper block till 50 degree celsius and we want to cool it down to 30 degree celsius so in that case ti will be the 50 degree celsius and t will be 30 degree celsius and the surrounding temperature will be the room temperature and uh, we will have the area and volume of the copper block and we can just uh, use the heat capacity of the copper block and uh, density of the copper block is also a known parameter so we will collect the time data that how much time it will take to cool down for the copper block in forced convention method and the fixed convention method and then we will calculate the heat transfer coefficient from that so before starting the experiment and heating up the copper blocks we will measure the copper blocks one arm it's a cube so if we just measure one arm so we can calculate the volume and area of the copper block and then next we will keep it here here we can see we have some water then we will just keep the temperature high so that it starts heating so here we can see that we have a software named ni signal express 2015 we will be using this software for the experiment So to collect the data we will click on the add step and then we will click on the accurate signals then DAQ MX accurate and then analog input so we will be collecting the temperature so here we will select thermocouple so in this one we have AI012 these are the channels so here we can see that uh, one of our uh, our thermometer is connected to channel 0 and one of the copper is connected to channel 1 and copper 2 is connected to channel 2. So here we will select 0, 1 and 2 and then press OK. So here we can see that we have already added our three channels and the value is zero here. So to see the value we have to click on run button and it will show the value. So we can see that uh, our room temperature is 21.67 and uh, one of the copper is heated till 49 degree celsius and one of the copper is heated till 48.93 degree celsius we can also see the data as a chart here we can see how the temperature is changing with time hmm. so here we have our two heated copper blocks so this one is attached to the channel 1 and this one is attached to the channel 2 and here we have no cooling agent 
and uh, we we have no source of any type of anything so this is our free convection method and here we have a fan which will which we will use to supply the air for the force convection and now we can see that here we uh, we can see the value that uh, in the forced convection the cooling is very fast and the free convection the cooling is not that much fast and uh, while starting so throughout this cooling procedure we will keep a timer with us so that uh, we can track all the values and uh, track the time that how much time it will it takes to get the both of the copper cool down to that certain temperature.